agriculture uses more land than just the cropland. The cropland is just a visible footprint, but you need roughly two to three times as much land to grow the fertilizer. If you're constantly taking a yield off a piece of land, you've got to replace that yield. It's got to come from somewhere. And if it's being done sustainably, living in a solar budget, it takes two to three times as much land to grow your compost crops or your manure crops as it does to grow food. So there's a much bigger footprint of agriculture. And then you need land for the mines to smelt the metal for, for plows and things like that, for the fuel, timber, all of those. And you need land for your farm workers and for all of their needs. So the agricultural footprint is actually much bigger than it actually looks in terms of. In the 70s, came, you know, people were making these dire predictions of how millions, hundreds of millions were going to starve in the 70s and the 80s. And they turned out to be wrong because we learned how to turn oil into food. I know, you know most of you know, know that piece of the story. I just want to show you a comparison here of here's wheat yields from 1950 to 2004 or so. And you can see this semi-logarithmic or just a nice, a nice curve here. And it really matches oil production just about perfectly. And if we graph population onto this as well, we would also see a curve going just about exactly the same rate. So oil into food. Oil is what, and you can see now, oil is kind of peaking, and wheat production's kind of peaking. There's no coincidence. This is the Green Revolution today. This is a former Green Revolution field in India. This is the farmer standing on it. It's completely salted because of the application of fertilizer for 30 years or so. This land is never coming back. It's the only way, never in terms of you know, our lifespans, because the only way to get salt out of land like this is to flush it with enormous quantities of fresh water, or you can do deep mulches and things like that, but there's no, salsa, there's no source of mulch, and there's certainly no source of really clean fresh water here. So this, this land is out of commission for generations because of the Green Revolution. So here's a graph from David Holmgren, one of the co-originators of the permaculture concept that he's let me use with his four scenarios for the future. And uh, he's, you can see by his language, I think the techno fantasy, uh, you see he's a little pejorative there, but the idea that we're, you know, we're at this, uh, this peak point and we'll, the techno fantasy is that we will discover something, a new energy source uh, something that's comparable to oil, except maybe better, and will continue on. That raises its own set of issues about pollution and population and things like that. But um, okay, so that's one possible scenario, and I'm agreeing that it's possible. We might find something to replace oil. There's the green tech stability: is we will make this little bit of a you know kind of belt tightening, putting sweaters on, sort of transition, um, and then we'll have solar panels everywhere and wind generators and you know new technology. Will, will get us out of this. And then there's the Atlantis scenario, you know, boom, um, the Doomer scenario. And the other one is the creative descent, and David has put the word permaculture on there as you know, this, is, this is where we may, may be able to go with this.